Hello everyone, in this video I will be taking apart my 2AR FXE engine, replacing the camshaft and retiming the motor. I got this engine from a 2013 Lexus ES300H with 70,000 miles on it from Fox Auto, which I highly recommend you get your engine from. This engine was $1400, which is a bit much in other areas, but up here in Michigan this is an average price. The first thing you need to do is remove all the engine accessories as you won't be reusing anything on the engine except the fuel rail. I started by removing the side mounts as those aren't needed, and also the partial harness that they left on. Next, I'm removing the exhaust gas recirculation system. This system also connects to the water pump. This pump is electrical, but in this swap you will need a mechanical one. A good place to get a replacement pump is ASIN. Next is the intake manifold with 6 bolts. Take note of the shape of the gasket as it is not the same as the 2AR FE gasket that you will need. Even though both hybrid and non-hybrid manifolds look different, they still bolt up to the same location with no problem. You will need to keep the fuel rail, but the injectors need to be switched to a bigger size. You will need a set of the dark green 545cc Caldina 3S GTE injectors. After removing all the accessories, we can open up the engine. Notice I did not remove the flex plate as I will have to hold down that side of the engine so that I can remove the very tightly torqued crankshaft bolt. All of the torque specs that are needed for the engine internals can be found as PDF documents in the description. If there are any extra specs that you need, a 2 day $20 subscription to Tech Info Toyota will give you everything that you can think of. I also used it for the wiring harness diagrams. Starting with the coils, you will need to remove the spark plugs, the VVTi solenoid, the cam position sensor, and the bolts holding down the valve cover. You do have a choice in either keeping this cover or replacing it with an FE cover. The difference between the FXE and FE covers is the single versus dual VVTi. The hybrid cover has only an intake VVTi port, while the FE valve cover and cam carrier have dual VVTi. You can run either with this swap, but the dual VVTi has the advantage of an extra 10 to 20 horsepower between 3000 and 5000 RPM, making the power band much smoother. I decided to go with this route. What you will need is an extra cam position sensor and VVTi solenoid, along with the non-hybrid cam carrier and valve cover. Both of those together are under $200 on eBay. The other VVTi phaser should come with the identical intake cam, but if it doesn't, it's about $50 from an FE cam. After removing the valve cover, we can see the camshafts inside. They reside inside a cam carrier, but to remove them you have to take off the timing cover to remove the chain first, as the chain is holding down the phasers. The timing cover has an RTV gasket on it which you will need to redo later, but you have to be careful when you remove the cover as it is made of aluminum and can scratch easily and even warp. After removing the harmonic balancer, remove all of the timing cover bolts. There is a spot where you can safely pry the cover on the right side, but on the left you have to tap the case with a hammer to get it to unstick. Even though there is a place where it seems convenient, don't pry at the seam as the surface could warp with enough force. At this point you can turn the engine with no issues. At this point I'd be surprised if I still had any warranty. Before you remove the timing guides, you must turn the engine so that it is not a top dead center. This is an interference engine, so you don't want the valves accidentally striking the pistons while you're spinning the cams. To remove the timing chain, you first remove the top timing chain guide, which is just one bolt. Then you remove the right side guide with two bolts, and the left side guide with one bolt. At this point, I didn't leave the camshafts in an equilibrium position. In the rest position, the valve springs are exerting equal pressure on all cam lobes. Mine was about 20 degrees off, which meant that if I released the tension in this chain suddenly, it could snap back violently. That's exactly what happened. Don't worry if this happens with you, no damage will occur. After removing the chain, we can remove the cam carrier. The smaller black bolts hold the cam carrier together and the larger golden bolts hold down the carrier to the engine. First, break the black bolts so that it's easier to undo later, then undo the golden ones all the way. It's important that you loosen the bolts in multiple passes. Don't just completely undo them one by one. I did about four passes until they were all off. 
This carrier also has an RTV gasket, which you will need to redo later. The phaser itself has four screws with a five star pattern that you will need to remove to access the springs inside, which, if replaced, will get rid of the startup rattle noise that is a common issue on these motors. This issue doesn't actually damage the phasers, but it is very annoying, so you might as well replace it while you are here. You can buy the stronger replacement springs for about $25 from Mark. The next step is replacing the cam. You will only need an identical intake cam and phaser from the same engine, and that will be put into the exhaust position. The main problem now is actually getting this camshaft. They are much rarer than the FE camshafts. The cam profiles look almost identical and the part numbers are very close together, so it's easy to mix them up if you're getting them from a recycler, which is how I got sent the wrong cam. Unless you live way up north, your best choice is to take apart FXE at your local junkyard. In my case, I was only able to get one new from Toyota, as no junkyard within an hour of me had them. You can get them very cheap, as there is almost no demand for them used, but they are about $300 new. Next, follow the TIS and torque them using the specified pattern in multiple passes. After cleaning off the old gasket material, use brake cleaner to remove any oil drips as they will prevent the RTV from sticking. Make sure that your bolt holes are also not filled with oil. They should not be bone dry, but if you have too much oil, you will snap the bolt before reaching the torque spec like I did. This is because the oil prevents friction from stopping the bolt, and instead the bolt will pull itself apart if you keep tightening without ever actually reaching your torque spec. The bolts are very easy to remove if you do snap one though. Before you install the cam carrier, make sure that the engine is not at top dead center. Spin the engine so that the mark on the crankshaft is pointing upwards, then spin it counterclockwise about 40 degrees to achieve this rest position, which is roughly where you will need it to be to line up the timing chain mark anyways. Also torque to spec in the specified pattern using multiple passes. At first I used a drill to speed things up, but make sure it is set on low torque. You should easily be able to stop the drill if you held it with your hand. Make sure you incrementally increase the torque dial with each pass. If you tighten all the way on each bolt, the cam carrier will warp and not seal right. The next thing you want to do is to retime the engine, but not to factory marks. Because this engine is starting off as an Atkinson cycle engine, the factory intake cams open up way too late. This is to let some air escape at the exhaust stroke, which achieves the Atkinson cycle without having fancy pistons. We don't want that, we want power. So you have to set new marks on both phasers. For the intake location, you want to make a new mark that is one tooth to the left of the factory mark. The factory marks are not the deep grooves, but the smaller shallow ones. In the exhaust location, you want to make a new mark that is 11 teeth to the left of the factory mark. This may seem like a lot, but keep in mind that there is an intake cam and intake phaser in the exhaust position. Next, you want to rotate the cams so that the chain marks can line up with the phasers. Carefully spin both cams until the new timing marks are roughly facing upwards. Keep in mind that the cams will snap into place because of the unequal force of the springs. They will do this a few times every revolution. Before you put the chain on, you want to lock the tensioner in place by pushing it in and installing a small pin. Any pin will do. I used a small allen key. After both timing marks are roughly facing upwards, I lay the timing chain on top and align the marks. 
I then try to line up the red dot on the bottom of the chain with the factory mark on the crankshaft, which is marked with a small dot. I have to spin the engine a bit to get it to line up. Next is the right side timing guide. You may need to spin the cams a little to add slack to the right side. After, install the left side guide. You can leave the top guide to later. Torque everything to spec after verifying the timing and install the top guide with one bolt. Clean the timing cover, making sure that the middle two spots are also clean. I forgot this part but did it later. If you are using a razor, make sure that it is new to prevent any scratches. Also try to keep it as parallel to the surface as possible. Do the same on the engine. Again, use brake cleaner as there will be oil in the way. Over here, I roughly laid out the bolts and their patterns. You will need to install the right side motor mount at the same time as you're installing the timing cover. Also make sure that your oil pump gaskets are all there and not somewhere on the floor. The RTV layout isn't uniform in this case. The lower you go, the thicker it gets. There are also thicker spots where the cover meets the jump between two mating surfaces on the engine, and on these spots, the face is not 100% smooth, so more RTV is needed to properly fill in these gaps. Don't forget to RTV the two middle circles. Tighten the bolts in the specified pattern just like before. You will need to do a few passes. From what I understood, the four 14mm bolts are torqued less than the rest. This was worded weirdly on the documentation, but it makes sense given their location and size. After completely torquing everything, install the motor mount and torque it down. Next, I install the crank pulley. Yours may look slightly different, but the accessories will only use the four ribs closest to the motor, so don't worry about getting a different one. This bolt gets about 200 pound-feet. Also, install the crankshaft position sensor. Next, you want to lubricate all the cams and valve components. Make sure not to get any oil into the spark plug holes. Clean the gasket surface and the gasket, especially at the location where the timing cover and cam carrier meet, which is about an inch long on both sides. This small area is the only place where you have to put RTV. Then torque all the valve cover bolts. The three metal bolts have crush washers, so pay attention to those. Next, install the spark plugs. You have to regap them to the 2AR FE spec, which is 0.044 inches. You could also buy new 2AR FE plugs. Next, install the coils. You may need to give them a little extra push so that they can pop in. After that, the two VVTi solenoids go in. Again, the FXE only comes with a single VVTi, so you will need to purchase an extra solenoid if you're going with a dual VVTi. They can be found at the junkyard or eBay. Then the cam position sensors, which you will also need an extra one of. That's the harness mount that I remembered I had. You can put this on later if you wanted to. And that's it for engine internals. Sorry it took so long, I ordered the camshaft and got sent a wrong one, so I had to wait an extra week just for the other one to arrive. In the next video, I'll be installing the clutch and transmission, as well as the rest of the engine accessories and mounts. If you need any specific part numbers that I used, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching.